Hello guys and welcome back to another video. Today I'll be talking about the top 10 left backs in the Premier League and in my opinion this season. So I'm not going to include the likes of Luke Shaw because he has been injured. So take that into note as my top 10. If you do go on to like the video, don't forget to like and subscribe and leave a comment down below your top 10 or if you disagree with any of my picks, which you probably might. So let's get into it. First up, I have Alfie Doherty. Now, I know what you're thinking. Oh, it's his first season in the Prem. Right. How well has this man done for Luton? Granted, Luton were predicted to come last. Yet, this man has one goal and seven assists this year. For, for a Luton side who had just been promoted, for, for a guy who no one even heard of until this year, if you're a Premier League fan, he, he's been nothing short of unreal. He's been one of, the, one of their best players this year. Seven interceptions as well, so he's great. Great at getting the ball and bloody running with it down down their left hand side, playing playing the five back, playing that wing back role. He does it so so well, and I can't fault him. So he is at my number ten spot. At nine, I have Milos Karakesh. Um, I just think for a side that have really surprised people this year. Obviously, you have the the stars of Dominic Solanke in their forward line at the moment, but really, so you look at their back line, they have enough done a good job. And Karakesh has been a big part of that. He, he, he come into this side, fresh from AZ Alkmaar, fresh out of 20, he's still young, he's 20. He fought before tackles and 19 interceptions. The bloke, the bloke has done really well this year. And from what I've seen of him, there's a lot to come from him. So yeah, he is at my number nine spot. Eight. A lot. I have Lucas Digne. Now, I could have put Alex Moreno here, but from judging of what I've seen, of Aston Villa. I have seen more of Digne than I have of Alex Moreno, so I cannot really comment. Aston Villa fans, if you think that Aston Moreno is better, put it down in the comments because it was a tie up between them two for this spot. One goal, three assists. I mean, it's not his most productive year. There's been seasons he's got seven, eight assists, stuff for Everton. But also he played for Barca, didn't he? So, and, and I think every time he does play, I feel like he, he, he does put a dangerous cross in a lot of times. But not only that, he is kind of solid defensively. 24 interceptions, that doesn't go unnoticed really. But yeah, from what I've seen of him, and with a really, for Aston Villa side, a flying high, and kind of getting their prediction very right, the left back spot has been kind of solid with uh, Digne and Alex Moreno, but for me, Digne just edges it out as being the better left back. Number eight, Digne. At number seven. Now, probably a bit of a, Controversial one, I'd say, but I've gone for Ben Chilwell. Yeah, before the whole Todd Bowley thing took over, he was a very, very good left back. But I feel like as he's gone into a five, and as he's and Pochettino has, has took over, I don't know. He's been he's been a little bit shaky, and even even when I saw him for England against Belgium, he he, he was he was shaky as well. He's, I don't know what it is with him. This is higher at seven because of what he has done and how well he can be. But this season, if he's had, if if it's if it's a bad performance, it's bad. Like it is. Honestly, you couldn't everything be on him. But if if it's a good performance, you go under under the radar because Cole Palmer would steal the show. But I feel like he does play a crucial part of of that back five, and I feel like he can be a leader as well. So. He is at number seven. Six, I feel like I've cheated on this one because I've gone for two players that play for the same club and I couldn't I couldn't really bring myself around to picking one of them. And it's the Arsenal left back duo of Alexander Zinchenko and Jakub Kiwar. Mainly because they're both really solid from what I've seen of them, but they're two completely different players at left back. You've got Kivior, who is great defensively, can, can play out from the back and stuff like that. You won't see him bomb up the line, you won't see him putting crosses in, you won't see him doing, uh, him going into midfield and playing that kind of sixth role. Whereas with Zinchenko, very good on the ball, passing range is very good, captain for his own nation. I feel like six is fairly reasonable for these two. So, yeah, and from what, to be fair, what I've seen of, of, of both of them, I haven't really seen a performance where I've gone, yeah, you, they've been really, really bad. 
this one's better than the other. I think they've just been all right. <laughs> That's just me. Arsenal fans will probably disagree. And number five, I have gone against my own allegiance <laughs> a little bit. Um, I've got Emerson of West Ham. Now, I do think he's a really, really underrated left back. And a lot of people have been sleeping on him. And I know West Ham fans are raving about him as well, but obviously, no one really notices that because of the likes of Jared Bowen, of the likes of Mohamed Kudus, all the four players. No one actually sits there and realises, wow, Emerson's actually really, really good. His stats are nothing. <laughs> They're really, really good. Like, he's in the top five for tackles one in the league with 90. And for a left back, that is bloody brilliant. Like, people will target him, but he'll come out on top. Eight, nine times out of ten, he does come out on top. He 159 jewels won, really good passing range, and, and, and feeding the likes of Kudus down the, down that, uh, from a long ball down the right hand side or left hand side, wherever he plays. His passing range is 83%. Now I feel that is relatively high considering how badly West Ham have been playing, and he has been a bright spark in that bad West Ham side. Even then, you've got two assists, one goal, what else do you really want from him? He's actually really, really solid. So he is at my number five spot. Now, number four, I could have put any City player here because I feel like the, the three players in mind was Nathan Ake, Jose Cavadio, and Rico Lewis because they have all played that role this year. But for me, as much as I do really like Nathan Ake, I think Gavardio is that better player. I feel like he, he has played at the highest level even for Dynamo Zagreb. I know he did sign that. You expect that sort of caliber of player for 80 million euros, but 80 million euros for a player who is 20, 20, 21, 22, I can't remember his age, that is on me. Really good on the ball. I remember him, oh, What I think it was the Arsenal game where you just completely solid and shut out Saka. Like not many not many players in the league, let alone in Europe, can really do that. So for me, I've gone for Josip Vardio. Not only can he he's got an 89% pass accuracy, which means he's really good on the ball. He's really good like I've, I have seen him do his little quest turns. I've seen him get out of danger and pass it backwards. And hats off to Josip Vardio. A lot of pressure on his back and I feel like he has kind of proven that. I do think Josko Vardio is up there and I do think he's better than the, the players I have below. So yeah, Josko Vardio for me is at number four. At number three, I have one of my favorite left backs, Rubius Estepinian, come from Villarreal, from a, a league that is pretty possession base. You'd think that it, it'd struggle, but Brighton just have this knack of finding players that can really, really perform well, no matter what age they are. And they've certainly found on the Peruvius Estepinian. I think he is a brilliant, brilliant left back. And he plays that role so perfectly because he, he is literally that player who can move from left back, go into midfield, or he can be part of that back three. He, he can do so much and his passing range is so good. His work rate's brilliant. And I think under the Zerbi, he has really, really thrived. 20, 64 duels won, 26 tackles, and 89% pass accuracy, which is a common theme for the top players, in my opinion. He's got two goals, four assists for a, a Brighton side that hasn't set the world alight. And I don't think it'll be any surprise that if he's in, in the next coming years, coming in as he's coming into his prime, he does get that big move to to the big the big European clubs again. I'm not saying Brighton aren't big and I'm not saying Villarreal is big, but I believe this man has, has, has the the ability to perform at the Champions League level at, at, the, at the likes of, say, Arsenal, at, at the likes of Liverpool. Just any, any of the top European sides, I believe he can perform for them. So for me, Pervis Estepinian is third. At second, Destiny Adogi. Need, need I say more? about how well this this man has done. Be honest, none of you knew who he was when they signed him two years ago. 
He did. He went out on. He did go out on loan to Udinese last year. Had decent numbers. Had a very good return. And Tottenham thought, you know what? We will give him that starting left back spot because who else did they have there? Ben Davies. You're not starting a whole season under Postecoglou with Ben Davies. So yeah, he went there. 21 years old, and he's done a brilliant, brilliant, brilliant job. He has been nothing short of, of, of sensational, in my opinion. It just goes to show that no matter what age you are, you can just really perform in, in, if you've got the right system around you. And I feel like Postecoglou has got that in the player with Destiny and Dogi. And to, to be that young and perform at such a level where you are classed as one of the best left backs in the league the first season you're there. For me, I just think he is the the ultimate left back. He can defend, he can attack, he can cross, he can he can pass, he can score. I think with two goals, three assists for a guy in his first season in the Premier League, for, for a Tottenham side that have revolutionised under a new manager, with and, and life without Kane. For me, Destiny Adogi is at number two. Going on to my number one spot. Is there any surprise if I put Andy Robertson here? <laughs> Is there any surprise? I think I think it'd be everyone's top left back. And I know I, I know I said earlier about Luke Shaw not being in it because of his injuries. I know Robertson has been injured. But when he has played, there is no doubt that he is, he is the best left back in the league. At the age of 30, he's done it for so long under Klopp. And he did and I remember he was part at the same time as Harry Maguire for Hull from when they were back in the Premier League and then he did make that move to Liverpool for £5 million. And now you look back at how much they actually bought him for, that is a bargain. That is such a bargain. And they've, they've really developed a, a, a leader, a, a guy that can assist, a guy that's passionate and he can half put a challenge in too, which I do really like about, about defenders. If you can put a good challenge in, a side challenge in, rile up the other players, wind them up, I think you, 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 you're the perfect defender and I think for me, Robertson is the perfect left back. It's got blokes won the league, blokes won a Champions League. He is for me just the, the, the ultimate the ultimate left He's back. He's my top 10. I've probably missed out players, so please down below, let me know who I've missed out. Because from the top of my head and from my research, these in my opinion were my best 10. Like I said earlier on in the video, don't forget to like and subscribe. I'll see you in the next video. Thank you.